Higher Grounds backstory is this David and Goliath tale about a group of Panamanian coffee growers who revolutionized the sector over a couple of decades. And Panama is a very small country, as you know, and a seemingly insignificant player in global coffee. They export less than 1% of the world's beans, pretty tiny. And up till the 1990s, nobody even knew that Panama grew coffee. But in the past couple of decades, Panamanian coffee has now broken every public auction price record. It stars consistently in international competition wins. And it's now the most sought after bean in the world. And Panama's accomplished this against the decades long backdrop of, of international coffee prices at rock bottom around a dollar a pound, a price that, you know, forces a lot of producing countries, a lot of producing families into really hard lives. So Higher Grounds, our documentary, tells the story of how Panama is reimagining coffee and driving new standards for quality and economics. You can find our film at highergrounds.film and it's, um, it's worth taking a look. I think what surprised us the most in the production of this documentary was how Panama's coffee growers achieved so much of their success through collaborative competition. They, they sort of banded together and founded the Specialty Coffee Association of Panama, or SCAP, to learn about the global coffee industry and build and share knowledge and work as a collective uh, to put Panama on the map and to brand it as a specialty coffee destination. And that's pretty special. You don't usually think of competition as collaborative, but in this case, we found that was a real key to their success. It, it, it's unusual everywhere, really. I mean, in, in competitive environments, you don't see a lot of incentives to collaborate. But I think these guys, what we understood from their story was that they were just you know, at a point of desperation, they were either going to have to get out of coffee altogether and grow something else, or they were going to have to go about this very differently. So Panama was one of the first countries, coffee growing countries, to reach out to the international specialty coffee community, like in an effort at first to just learn more about roasting, cupping, consumer trends, processing. They didn't know much about all this. They were just growing the beans and hoping somebody would come and buy them, which is pretty much how coffee has operated over the years in all countries. So they did this by connecting with the Specialty Coffee, coffee Growers Association of um, America initially and eventually of the world um, in the US and with other global experts. And this then, they were th that, that gave them a leg up with regard to knowing, you know, the whole supply chain, logistics chain, um, consumption chain. And then, then that enabled them to start growing in a different way and start uh, branding in a different way and start selling in a different way. Now that, that brought the Panamanian growers together. I mean, they had no choice. It's such a small amount of, you know, world supply that they're dealing with that that together they found they were stronger. And this in turn has sort of generated an example for uh, other countries. They actually, these guys go to, around and speak to other growers in other countries, explaining how this, this process of learning and collaborative competition has actually enabled them to brand their area, their little micro <clears throat> climates, microcosms for coffee, and at the same time, distinguish their own fincas, their own production houses within that. Um, so it's not, it's not an either or situation. You don't have to sacrifice your individual by supporting the collective. It really achieves both ends if, if done properly. And these guys, I, I, I think that's really one of the things that makes the story so special.